that there is a wide river on one side of the river live people whose main object in life is to carry heavy stones wherever they go whatever they do they carry big heavy stones on their weight weight weighty stones on their backs the stones are of no benefit to them but in their society the people who carry more stones and more heavy weights they are considered prestigious on the other side of the river people don't carry stones they live very happily they play and sing and dance but on the stone carrying side of the river the, the people there also they're also uh always in friction they want to show i can i carry more stones than you i'm better than you and someone may try to arrange to knock the stones off someone's back and someone may spread a rumor that actually this person is carrying such a big stone but actually it's hollow and someone spreads other rumors it may be true that this person he got this big stone by killing someone else who used to have the stone So sometimes from the happy side of the river people call out and say hey come over come over here and sometimes someone comes from that side of the river and comes over to the stone carrying side stone stone carrying side and they say hey why don't you come over to our side of the river it's much better over there how can we go we'll be drowned by the stones in the river so the, the people from the happy side say well just throw away your stone and then you can easily cross the river throw away our stone what a ridiculous idea this person get him out of here he's not carrying any stones he's a fool what kind of antisocial person is this going against all our ancient traditions sometimes a few people they think yeah actually what's the use of these stones anyway please don't sit showing your back to krishna hmm and those people they take the advice and they cross over the river and they go to live happily but actually even when they give up their stones they can't cross immediately because their whole body is so misshapen they have to do some exercises so they can get enough strength to, or their body is in the right shape to swim across the river and they're uh, they're so used to carrying the stones they're not quite sure that well should i go or not they don't really have faith and sometimes they put the stone on their back and then they put it down again and because it's been all their life and they can't think of anything else and if anyone starts to put down their stone and think about crossing the river then all their relatives and friends and everyone will tell them this is not proper you think you know better than everyone else your father your grandfather your great grandfather they come from a very prestigious line of stone carriers <laughs> who do you think you are puppy so i think you can understand the analogy what are the stones material attachments we have so many material attachments which they do no good to us they simply cause us to be born again and again and again with a new set of material attachments we in the present life we have so many material attachments for instance we, uh, we may have a new car and we show driving around the neighborhood let everyone see my new car we become attached to our home even if it's some dump 
we become attached to our family members. Next life we have a new set of family members. My dear mother, father, grandmother, wife, children, brothers, sisters. And next life we have uh, another set of family members. They, we may converse with them. Boom, boom. <laughs> and we get a new set of attachments. The dog thinks, this is my area. If, any, if anyone comes here, I'll bark at them. Or any dog comes, I'll bark at them. What is the actual benefit to us of these material attachments? Zero. Actually, less, it's a minus. Because the heavy weights of our material attachments push us down, down, down into lower species of life. There is happy life in the spiritual world. We are meant for living and dancing and playing with Krishna. Krishna is always happy. Everyone who is with Krishna is always happy. There's no material attachments, only a spiritual attachment to Krishna. But we've been in this material world, life after life after life. And although we're in this unnatural position of getting born and dying and thinking that everything in relationship to this body is me, we take it to be natural. Our whole way of thinking and acting is completely bizarre. Just like someone, a whole society of people dedicated to carrying big heavy stones. It doesn't make any sense. Now if we saw someone carrying big heavy stones, we would say, well that doesn't make any sense. But we don't see our material attachments. They're not so physically manifest. The attachment is in the mind. It's subtle. But it binds us to this material world. So we should see through the eye of Shastra. See through the eye of knowledge. Utkramantang stitang ba pi bhunjanam ba gunan vitam vimura nanu pashanti pashanti jnana chakshusha. Sri Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that people who are very foolish, which means pretty much everyone in this material world, they do not see how we are going from body to body to body. They uh, do not see how we are trying to enjoy under the influence of the three modes of nature. But we can see this if we see with the eye of knowledge. Krishna gave Arjuna the eye of knowledge by speaking Bhagavad Gita. Before Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, the situation... And after, the situation was the same. The same soldiers were on the battlefield. Nothing physically, visibly had changed. But Arjuna's mind had changed. Nashto moha smriti labdha tvat prasadan maya chuta stitosmi gata sandeha karishe vachanam Arjuna told Krishna, after hearing you, all my illusion is destroyed. I have regained my proper understanding. By your mercy, Achuta, he addressed Krishna as Achuta. Achuta means he who never falls into illusion. So Arjuna said, now I'm fixed. All my doubts have gone away and I will do as you say, as you order. We should be prepared to accept orders from Krishna. Otherwise, in the name of being independent and very intelligent, we will come to the conclusion that carrying stones is my life and soul. I should, I'm very intelligent and I've understood that uh, actually I have to do this and I have to do that and we, so many ideas will help. This is called manasijam, the ideas born from the polluted mind, by which we travel birth after birth on the manoratam, the chariot of the mind. And by material attachments, we remain tied in this material world. So instead of having our mind uh, being tied down by our mind in this material world, we should 
Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayoho. We should place our mind at the lotus feet of Krishna. Everyone should take instructions from Krishna. And Krishna's representatives, they cross the river and they canvas, come over, leave your stones, come over to the proper side. It is absolutely foolish to remain as a stone carrier. People think, I'm very intelligent. I have a PhD. I'm from a Brahmin family. We're all very intelligent. All fools. Someone who becomes more intelligent at carrying stones, it means he's actually less intelligent. Real intelligence begins with throwing away the stones. But because we have no real intelligence, we think that there's nothing to do but to carry stones. Everyone's carrying stones. It's completely absurd to suggest not carrying stones. This is just bizarre. It's, it's, uh, so everyone should resolve to go to the happy side of the river. You should all give up your material attachments. Is it good instruction? Not everyone sure. And so they look saying everyone is saying yes. I better say yes too, but I'm not really sure about it. <laughs> okay, let's have a quiz. Question number one. Who wants to be happy? Anyone doesn't want to be happy, put up your hand and we'll bring a big heavy hammer and smash you on the head. <laughs> so everyone wants to be happy. Right, okay. That, that was an easy that was an easy one. Easy question. So, uh, you want to be happy as a frog, a dog, a caterpillar, a snake, a monkey, a chimpanzee, and maybe sometimes the chief minister of Tamil Nadu. You never know. <laughs> you might make it one lifetime around. Otherwise, you could at one time you could be the chief minister of a bunch of monkeys running around here and there. <laughs> this is stupid. To remain in this material world is completely stupid. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's carrying stones. Everyone's remaining in the material world. Everyone should give up their foolishness. Tamasima Jyotir Gamaya, come out of the darkness of illusion. Come to the light. Everyone should chant Hare Krishna. Follow four principles. No meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex. Give up all material attachments and go to the spiritual world. If you do that, all your insane so-called friends and relatives will say that you are crazy. What is this nonsense? You went to school for so many years and you have a good job and you can, you can get plenty of stones. <laughs> See, I, I, I trained my son all these years just so he would be, get, be a prestigious stone carrier. And then all of a sudden this crazy guy came and told him not to carry any stones. <laughs> you don't have to suffer anxiety, misery, repeated birth and death. It is very easy, especially in the modern age, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is very easy to go to the spiritual world. All you have to do is chant Hare Krishna, but you have to give up your stones. <laughs> okay, we understand it's difficult to give up the stones. Actually, it's not difficult, but because we have this insane attachment to them, we think it's difficult. First of all, we should understand that this carrying stone business or trying to be happy in this material world is all nonsense. And then by chanting Hare Krishna, we can gradually give up these attachments. But don't make it too gradual. We'll go on carrying our stones and chanting Hare Krishna and say, Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give them up. <laughs> just, just after a few more days. Then you come back after a few years and say that, Well, you said you were going to give up your stones after a few days. And he says, Yeah, yeah, in a few days. Same thing as I said before. <laughs> See, I'm an honest person. Same thing I said then, I'm saying now. So, a few days becomes a few lives, and it goes on and on and on. So, just understand, this material world, there is nothing of any benefit here for us whatsoever. These attachments to 
home, wife, children, money, position, prestige, to our own body which is stinking. It's all binding us in this material world. So chant Hare Krishna and go to the spiritual world. There's nothing holding us back except our own foolish attachments. So chant Hare Krishna, study Srila Prabhupada's books, listen to his lectures, associate with devotees, especially devotees who encourage you to throw off your stones. Be careful of associating with devotees who say, well, you can carry stones also. <laughs> but if anyone tells you to go and carry your stones, you can understand he's a fool, even if he has tilak on his forehead. So associate with those devotees who will help you and encourage you to give up the stones on your back which are pushing you down. Chant Hare Krishna, surrender to Krishna and go to Krishna. Don't wait in this material world. There's nothing here but misery. Give up any idea of being happy in this world. You've been trying for millions of lifetimes. You didn't succeed yet. Nor will you succeed even if you go through another crore of crores and crores of lifetimes. Happiness is in the spiritual world with Krishna. We don't belong here at all. Okay, story over. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the story and now you can go back to carrying your stones. <laughs> or you can chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Up to you. Okay, thank you very much, Ramanandri, and have a good day.